Welcome to episode 7 of Merchant Slipped. In the last episode we started out under siege, but that problem kind of took care of itself. We've uh, finally got our metal industry going and we are producing some metal armor. Tensions ran high between our new fortress mayor Tyrus and the militia commander Morrill when we were under attack by a forgotten beast. In the end we dispatched the beast without too much trouble, but Obak lost his hand in the fighting. After that fight, Tyrus and Obok had a talk and decided that Obok will stay captain of the guard for the time being. It's not ideal with him missing his hand and all, but his experience might help and, in the words of Moral, every military dwarf will carry the scars of battle. As captain of the guard, Obok needs an office though, so we've started work on that immediately. The work on a new part of the fortress has progressed nicely as well. Though the dwarves made some questionable decisions on how and where to start digging the moat around the trade depot. They basically mined themselves into a corner and the outer edges of the moat here are currently unreachable. Uh, we'll fix that soon. Looking at the rest of the new fortress, work is underway, but there's still a lot to do. Looking at the stock reports that Mafol still keeps up to date, something catches my eye. Remember Yakui, the March Titan? He visited us a few episodes back and got into a tangle with a goblin siege. Well, he died and our dwarves hauled his corpse inside and apparently used some of the corpse to make soap. I guess they rendered his body into fat which they used to create tallow and soap. Heh, <laughs> I wonder how that smells. It must be the ultimate insult to a beast like that. Uh, anyway, I just found that funny. In this report we can also see that we have over 100 bars of copper, so we've got plenty of that lying around for now. With the cavern bridge open, our dwarves are still busy cleaning up the place. There's constantly dwarves running in and out of the caverns. This does pose a security risk however, because monsters and wildlife can come running into the caverns at any time. Looking around I notice that there's still one of the Batman in the caverns. It's not unscathed, but it managed to survive the attack by the forgotten beast Anna, who has killed all his brothers and sisters that were hanging around in the caverns earlier. Though I kind of feel bad for the little guy, he does pose a risk to our civilian dwarves running in and out of the caverns all the time. If one of them strays somewhere close to it, it will undoubtedly attack without thinking twice. Upon investigation, the Batman seems to be flying in the air though. It's, well, it's just hanging there. Maybe it's traumatized by the loss of his kinsman. Terrorist calls in a meeting with Moral and Obak. Guys, I think we need to clear the caverns once and for all. If we kill the last Batman, it means the caverns are more or less safe and we can probably start gathering the resources in there. Obok and Moral look at each other. Really? I I'm still recovering from my missing hand and you want to send us back in to fight again? Ah, come on, this is hardly a forgotten beast. It's just a Batman that's all on his own in the cave. You should be able to kill it without too much trouble. And how the hell would you know that? You've been in one fight and you left the military right after. Oh, well, what would you have me do? Fight with one arm? I can't use my right arm. <laughs> well, that's not stopping Obak. Shut up. I am tasked to make sure this fortress is safe. And it won't be until that Batman is taken care of. I order you to take it out. For the safety of the fortress. Morrow clenches her fist. The thing is flying in the air. We'd need some trained crossbow dwarfs to injure it so we can take care of it on the floor. Alright, I'll recruit Olon and Enot into a new squad. They'll carry crossbows. Olon has some experience with them, so take them down there and take care of the problem. Did I stutter? We need experienced dwarfs to do this. Well, this will just have to do. Now you wanted to be in the military, right? So do the honorable thing and protect this fortress. Moral and Obak look at each other. If this goes badly, it will be on your head. They leave the room together. Tyrus is going to get someone killed. Mark my words. We've recruited Olan into a new squad. 
He's the one with the most Marx Dwarf experience, so he's a logical leader. Enot is just an inexperienced recruit. But all they need to do is fire the Batman out of the sky, and hopefully the Diamonds of Meeting will do the rest once the creature is underground. There we go. All the dwarves have got it right under the Batman Spearman. As expected, the ex-dwarves can't reach the Batman up there. He's still just, well, hanging there in the sky. He seems catatonic. Hopefully this won't be too hard. The crossbow dwarves open fire. Oh, that woke the Batman right up. It's attacking. Loads of blood all around, and I don't think that's just Batman blood. It is down though. Looking through the surroundings, I quickly find some dwarven teeth flying around. Enot Fesh Moses is missing them. Well, if that's all, you don't need teeth for drinking dwarven wine. Upon examining him, it looks like the missing teeth is probably the least of his problems though. He's been completely mangled. He's cut open all over, broken leg, torn open neck, his foot is mangled beyond recognition, his liver is mangled as well, kidneys bruised, head injured, teeth gone, spine bruised. Uh oh. I'm afraid Doc will be getting a lot more training for his medical skills. Poor Enot hasn't been in the military for more than a day. Let's follow the guy on his way to the hospital. He's basically just, well, crawling over the floor. Slowly moving his way through the caverns. He's retching and vomiting all over the place. Oh, I don't think he's gonna make it. Ah, he's passed out. I hope one of the dwarves will pick him up and bring him to the hospital. Poor guy. And then, when hope seems lost, a shadow emerges from the caverns. Hearing about the fight and the wounds of Enot, Mafal hurried over down as quickly as he could. Hang in there, Enot. I'll get you to the hospital. Mafal kneels down next to Enot and throws him over his shoulder, and begins sprinting towards the hospital. Enot's blood is dripping down all over his bookkeeper uniform. Come on, Enot. We'll get you through this. Don't worry. Mafal drops Enot into the hospital bed and runs out to get Doc. He stands in the doorway for a second and looks back. Two other dwarves already made it to the hospital and are lying in the beds, both with wounds. As usual, Jenkins managed to get himself hurt again. His head is torn open. As Limerit killed the Batman, but his neck has been torn open in the process. This might have been a tougher fight than we initially thought. Mafal looks back at the scene for a second before running towards the stairs. Doc! Doc! Shortly after, Doc comes charging in and goes to work on poor Enot. There's a lot of work to do, so the Doc will be operating on him for quite a while. Sewing up wounds, putting splints in place, washing the patients. Yeah, this is going to take a while. Us and Jenkins will have to wait for a bit. While all this was going on in the hospital, Moral hurried and got all back. Together they are on the way to face Tyrus. Looking at her, I worry about Tyrus's safety. She barges into this office. You! You absolute worthless son of an elf! Tyrus wants to reply, but sees in Moral's eyes that he might be better off keeping his mouth shut for a second. This is the second time your incompetence endangered our fortress. First Obak loses his hand, and before the wound is healed you send us in, and now Enot is fighting for his life. We should have never voted for you, you traitor. Just about the entire fortress heard her scream out these words. Tyrus steps forward. Moral. I have to make difficult decisions. It's my responsibility as mayor to... And what is your responsibility to Enot? Don't you lecture me on responsibility. I've been out there twice fighting for their life while you sit here in your office. I didn't choose to be incapacitated. I want to be out there with you guys, but I can't. I answered the call when we were under siege. I was one of the first to go in against the goblin. I don't see any honor in sitting here while you guys fight for the safety of the fortress. But I don't have a choice. I'm done with this conversation. We do have a choice. And the next election will be very clear on what we choose. Next time, I will handle all military matters. 
You just sit here in your office. Moral storms out. Tyrus looks at Obak, but Obak leaves along with Moral, leaving Tyrus in his office, alone. He sits down and puts his head in his hand. Mafal enters the room. Ugh, what do you want? Just coming in here to gloat? Or tell me how you would have done things differently? No. You did what you thought was right. I did the same the day we lost Ethel. At least we haven't lost any more dwarves so far. <laughs> yeah, we'll tell that to Enot. I will. And I'll talk to Moral as well. You just stop sulking and be a mayor. The caverns are safe, for now. That's what you wanted, right? We've begun work on the second part of the fortress and that's looking good so far as well. So get your head out of your ass and get to work. We can make something of Merchant Slip, but we need a leader to do it. Leave military metals to Moral and focus on the logistics and planning. <sighs> Tyrus takes a deep breath. You're right. We've achieved what we set out to do. We have some injuries, but those will heal. Perhaps I just have to accept the fact that I'm not a military leader that I was hoping I could be. Good. I'll talk to Moral. Mafal turns around and opens the door. Mafal! Well, thanks. Mafal nods and leaves. Many hours later, there's finally some good news. Doc has finished working on Enot, and he will probably make it, though he will have to use crutches for now. We can see him leaving the hospital here. Jenkins and Ash will follow shortly after. Let's hope there won't be any nasty infections. The next day the dwarves are very busy clearing out the caverns. With all the enemies gone, we can finally pick up all the stuff that's been lying down there. We've started mining some visible copper veins, and all the armor the Batman were wearing is being hauled to the stockpile. Dusim Kubukilun has made a new artifact in the meantime. He had a fey mood and made Uristaval. A basalt mug. Urist of all. Dagger loft. This is a basalt mug. All craft or ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with cushion basalt cabochons and encircled with bands of rectangular native gold cabochons. On the item is an image of an emperor penguin in native copper. That looks awesome! Gold and copper and a penguin! He must have seen those back in the mountain homes of Edenabal in the snowy north. Very nice. It's worth over 40,000 value as well, so it's very valuable. Nice job. Next we get the message that Alir Ali Mapap has passed away. I've been noticing her wandering around depressed before, but I didn't know she refused to drink or eat. She was the lady consort who was being haunted by the ghost of Ido, the monster slayer in the last episode. I guess she never recovered from all the trauma. Well, let's make sure to give her a proper burial before she herself starts haunting the bulbous berries. Here we see her being buried. Hmm, that burial chamber is starting to fill up a bit. Looking around we see the coffins of Ethel, that's the only dwarven casualty up till now. Then we see Yonik, one of the monster slayers who got killed by the giant Alm if I'm not mistaken. Ido, our old fortress ghost, Risen, Gifish, Kol, Meng, Edem, Alir. Man, I can't even remember some of these casualties. Occasionally, the monster slayers go off into the cavern to hunt an animal or monster, and, well, they get found back later, dead. I guess that happened more often than I was aware of up to, until now. Well, we'll still have some room left, but we'll have to keep an eye on this. As some time has passed, let's take a look at how Enot is doing. Looking at his description, he made a pretty good recovery. His spine is still bruised and he is still missing some teeth, of course. But the fracture has been healed and his kidney and liver damage has been healed as well. He's pretty damn lucky. His quote is, I'm feeling randy today. Well, I think that just about proves it. He's made a rather nice recovery. Judging by his memories, he's been busy cleaning the caverns after having helped clear them earlier. That must feel rather nice for him. He's been picking up a lot of corpses from down there. 
He's not too bothered by it though, so that's nice. He still is occasionally reliving his traumatic experiences, but I'd say that's normal. Good to see him back to work. Let's check in on Jenkins as well. Yeah, he seems to have healed up nicely. His quote is, be merry. <laughs> okay. He's seen Alir, the lady concert, die, which left quite the impression on him, but otherwise he seems like a perfectly happy dwarf. Looking at his description, I noticed that he is currently more fearless and faultless. Ha, <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Jenkins, all right. Looking at our fortress health screen, we can see that he does have an infection though, together with us and one of the masons. I hope they can fight that off, but well, only time will tell. Our dwarves are still busy cleaning up the caverns when we see a giant alm sitting outside in the cavern. Our military is completely geared up though, so they should be capable of killing these quite easily. Morrill orders both squads to kill the alm, but it doesn't put up much of a fight and gets slain easily. Good. We're finally starting to be able to handle some of the threats without too much issue. Having said that, a while later we get the message that a blind cave bear has wandered into the caverns. It hit a peasant a few times, so we've dispatched the diamonds of meeting. However, before they could come in, a human hammerer comes in and bashes the animal dead. This shows that we shouldn't be feeling too safe just yet. Though the peasant wasn't too badly hurt, one lucky hit could change that the next time. Tyrus gets word of our last couple of fights in the caverns. Since Morrill has effectively taken over all the military leadership duties, she's been deciding on her own to send out the squads or not. Tyrus calls in Morrill for a talk. She comes in clenching her fist tightly, ready for another confrontation. Hi Morrill. First of all, good work keeping the caverns safe. You've dispatched a number of animals down there, and I'm very happy with the work you and your squad has provided. Second, I'd like your advice. My advice? Yes, as militia commander, what do you think? Should we keep our bridge down to keep the caverns open, or should we just close the bridge off? We have most of the stuff out of the caverns as it is. Taken aback by the sudden change of tone from Tyrrest, Marvel takes a moment to size Tyrrest up. Well, hmm, if you ask me, a couple of our citizens have been wounded, however we've been able to handle most problems quickly and efficiently. It's given our squads important practical experience, so I say keep the caverns open. Alright, I'd like to ask you though, can you keep a close eye on the caverns, send out occasional patrols maybe? Just so we minimize chances of accidents with the caverns wildlife. We are already always keeping a close eye on the caverns. But we'll put out the occasional patrol, sure. Thanks Moral, that will be all. Moral scratches her head as she heads out of the door. We'll just have to keep an extra eye out for the changes in the caverns. But our military is effective at handling most trouble there, so we'll leave the bridge open. A little while later some elven traders show up again. I thought we had pissed them off for good the last time they were here, but I guess they want to try again. We'll just do a simple trade, some bits and pieces for some instruments. They do have some cool animals in there, but we don't really have much to trade of value that's not stored in a wooden bin, and since the elves get pissed as soon as we offer anything wood, we'll just skip on the opportunity. Oh dear, we have a little problem. Since Tyrrest has asked Morrill to keep an eye on the caverns, she's seen some Dralfas moving in. Dralfas are huge grazing animals with long manes that feed on the vegetation and mushrooms in the caverns. They are quite capable of tearing a dwarf in half though, so Morrill ordered all civilians to evacuate the caverns. We locked the door in the entryway and figured we'd be safe until they moved on. Dralfas generally don't attack dwarfs unless disturbed, so we figured we'd be safe behind a simple door. However, during the excavation of our new plants, our miners mined out a chef which accidentally boarded the cavern entry. It's only a tiny diagonal hole, but somehow these Dralfa managed to squeeze right on through. And they are now inside our fortress. This has the potential to be a huge problem. Four Dralfa are right next to our central staircase. When Moro reported this to Tyrus, he ordered the hallways to be closed off with doors. Let's hope our dwarves can place these doors before Dralfas move in to the heart of our fortress. I'm pausing the game. 
The Drellfuss seem to be moving around in the hallway. They aren't moving in just yet. And here come our dwarves to place the doorway. The Drellfuss seem to be moving away from the dwarves for now, so they managed to seal off the hallway. Whew, that could have gone a lot worse. We need to keep a very close eye on our digging in the future. Sometime later we get the message that some new migrants have arrived. Very good. We can use some extra hands, because a lot of the work is not really getting done. There's just too much stuff to haul for the 75 dwarves we have right now. 17 new dwarves joined Merchant Slipped, most of whom will be put onto hauling duty straight away. Here we can see them gathering around in the bulbous berries, getting acquainted with the fortress. Wait, what's this? An elven baby has been born in our fortress. Nine Fuxaimara has given birth to a girl. My, my, a new life born, right here in our fortress. We would have preferred to have given birth to a strong dwarf and baby, of course, but this is cause for celebration indeed. Nine Faxaimara is one of the elven poets that has been entertaining the visitors in our fortress. She feels adoration after giving birth to a girl and is blissful after becoming a parent. It's her third kid. Well, I guess the bulbous berries will have a baby resident from now on, accompanying the poet group. Very cool. Good luck to you, little girl. You picked a fine fortress to be born in. And with that, I think it's a good time to end the episode here. We've been working mostly on cleaning the caverns this episode, but I think we've closed that chapter for now. Next episode, we'll continue working on our new fortress. Thank you so much for watching, and I'd love to see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye.